Yo, what up? I'm back at you. It's me again, Mike Cardi. We about to get... Yo, what up? I'm back at you. Hope y'all are doing pretty good. Hope y'all are doing pretty good. Hope y'all are doing pretty good. <laughs> I'm actually testing y'all out on my new camera, so we're going to have to see how this whole damn thing goes, all right? So y'all let me know if it's blurry or something. I'll probably have to re-record this. Y'all probably won't even damn see it. So, boom. What up, what up? <laughs> it's me again, Mike Cardi. We about to get into that on Queen Sugar. Yes. You know, I love this damn series. Um, the Borderlands and the Landry's, they had this ongoing beef that's uh, been going on for years and stuff. We're not going to get into this whole little back history of the situation, but uh, I will say this right here. Um, this season right here is going to be very interesting to see how the people actually turn out. And, um how these characters really unfold. So I'm really excited to see, um, kind of give you a brief overview of how we left off last season. Of course, you know, uh, let's start off with Hollywood. Uh, he pretty much got the settlement from the whole explosion on the rig and stuff. And, you know, uh, he come back and proposed to buy. And also we got dang on, uh, Charlie and, um, Davis and Micah, well, you know, Charlie and Davis, they're no longer together because of the whole infidelity and cheating scandal that took place. And then, you know, uh, Charlie has actually started Queen Sugar and stuff. She moved in there with Micah and everything. And uh, Micah, he's still recovering from the whole... Um, police incident where the police actually put the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger so he's still traumatized from that but he's also been learning his back history and his roots and stuff from his auntie Nova so to bring you on to Miss Nova Nova she uh, leaves off last season by actually writing a great article and stuff so her actual writing career is starting to take uh, take off and you know hit its you know uh, uh, elevation point and stuff so we really excited to see where she goes with her writings and stuff because she really touched base on a lot of things a lot of dang on touchy topics and stuff so I can't even talk and um you got Ralph Angel, you got Darla, and you got Blue. Well pretty much uh, Darla reveals uh after Ralph Angel had proposed to her and stuff and her parents had came um that pretty much Blue may not be his or whatever because she was out there tricking and hoeing out in the streets and stuff and so she pretty much kind of ain't gonna just pin the baby on Ralph Angel like some of these damn women tend to do out here in these damn streets or whatever. That shit is not right and uh, yeah Ralph Angel was pretty much fucked up over the situation and uh, he had to go and break up with her ass in the last scene of the last season and um, that's pretty much where we left off and everything so these characters or whatever they're, they're kind of taking shape and stuff and let's not mention um let's not forget to mention that blue is actually growing up so as you know when children grow up they start to see stuff and everything they start to comprehend a little bit better and see shit for what the hell it is so parents try to hide things but that shit usually comes out some type of way shape or form or whatever the kid figures that shit out so that's where blue is with this whole particular situation and we got a couple of other miscellaneous characters and stuff um also don't forget that dang on charlie she made the deal with the landry's and stuff and and you know her that which caused her and um what's his name to break up uh remy to break up so that's where we at with this whole situation the new season starts off with charlie she's pretty much jogging down the street of course she done went natural and stuff her hair is beautiful and all that and uh she's getting her exercise on and pretty much contemplating it and, and thinking while she's running and stuff up to her new mansion that she has just bought and everything because she is Definitely moved out of Queen Sugar, especially since she had signed a deal with the Landry's. So she needed to get out of there just so she can have some thinking and breathing room as well. So her and um, Micah, they're pretty much in the process of unpacking and all that. And, and Micah, he's kind of... Micah's kind of... Mm, He's kind of still indifferent about the situation. I don't know if he likes being there uh, and no look, or does he want to go back to his old life or whatever. But he's kind of hesitant about unpacking and all that. And uh, Charlie's like, you need to get your stuff together because, um, you know, you got to go start getting ready for college, you know, filling out applications and all that. You know, this is the year to start doing those things. So he's actually transitioning, you know, into adulthood and all that and starting to see things for what it is. Um, he also revealed that Davis is going to be coming in town and visiting. So Charlie's kind of like, okay, you know, whatever. And then, you know, uh, 
Spontaneously, Charlie gets a text message from a lady named Vicky about an officer or whatever. So, Charlie looks at it weird or whatever. She kind of has, like, this blank stare. And uh, that's kind of where that scene particularly ends. We'll find out about that text message in a little bit. But let's move right along to dang on Nova. Nova, she's actually in front of a book publishing company. And they're actually thinking about... Um, putting her book out, you know, all of her articles and stuff that she's written and put into like this nice book and turned into like this bestseller and stuff. So she's there sitting there with the people and um, the editor wants to get to know her and so she's kind of letting them know like, you know, I've always wanted to change the world and um, I'm always wanting to stay grassroots. Well, the publishing company is like, no, we're looking at bestseller girl. So go ahead and get that grassroots stuff out your head. They ain't going to be ready to go to your next thing, your elevation level. And that's what I'm saying, girl. You you got these dang on talents, you got to be ready to dang on spread your wings. That was kind of the same thing that Mr. Dubois, your ex, was trying to do in the last season. But um, I don't think you was ready for the type of level that he was um, trying to put you on, which is the, the, the TV screen and everything. But you writing the books, that's your area, so you can definitely express yourself that way. So, you know, definitely Nova, you know, think about that thing. You know, they actually asked her, you know, was um, she ready to sign it? They kind of like, she gave this blank stare and that scene went off. So, I'm not sure she's, you know, still contemplating or whatever, but I'm like, girl, go ahead and step out on faith and do the motherfucking damn thing okay boom let's move right along to dang on ralph angel and blue um they pretty much at the house and uh ralph angel's kind of having a tough time with blue because blue is kind of at that stage where he's kind of being rebellious and he's kind of at that little talk backstage and everything that children go through and um he's kind of like i don't really want to go to school at this point so that's what that whole little tip is about and you know ralph angel's like you know come on blue you got to go i ain't up for this bullshit today or whatever and um you know, Blue, at this point, he pretty much discovers the box with Darla's name on it. He's like, you know, this box for mommy or whatever. And um, Ralph Angel had to play that thing up like, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying, just the stuff I got to send her. So he's starting to figure out, like, okay, why is my mama's stuff packed up and she's supposed to be living here or coming back here? And um, when is she going to be coming the hell back? So... Mind you that Blue don't know about the breakup and everything. And him even know that Ralph Angel may not even be his damn biological daddy at this point. So he's oblivious to the situation. So we're going to kind of see how he starts to piece the puzzles and stuff together and everything. What kind of questions that his little smart ass come up with as the season goes on. So, uh, Charlie meets with Sam and Jacob Landry, and of course she signed a deal with them, uh, well not really signed, but she shook on a deal with them last season, and, um, here she's here to actually sign the actual documentation, and, uh, at this point, Sam Landry's like, I want to have a meeting with her privately, Jacob, so you need to get the hell out, and, um, Charlie's kind of looking at the situation, and, and Jacob's kind of looking at the situation like, okay, what the hell you need to talk to her about, or whatever. So, uh, Charlie at this point in time, she's kind of playing her role or whatever, but this meeting is about the whole 1% that she's supposed to be holding on to with Queen Sugar and everything, and, um, which is the ownership and all that, because she pretty much gave up all her rights and all the farmers and stuff. Hell, they had done left her ass anyway, because all the underhanded shit that the Landrys had done pulled and done scared these motherfucking house niggas or these field niggas or whatever out here. But, um, like I say, um, she really didn't have a damn leg to stand on, so she's trying to work her way from the inside. That's the whole plot that she has from um, that only her and Ralph Angel really know about. But the Landrys don't know this shit. And um, pretty much Sam is like, you know, your dad would be proud of this whole transaction about you teaming up with us. And um, at this point, I think Charlie's kind of like, okay... What would my dad be thinking about this situation? Would he be proud of me or whatever? Because she kind of goes off into this little stare and everything. But I'm hoping that this whole situation does not backfire on you, Charlie. I know you damn calculated with the shit that you do. And I know you got some shit up your damn sleeve. But I just hope that, you know what I'm saying, they don't pull no fuck shit on you and have you hemmed up in a whole bunch of shit or whatever. So, um, boom. Let's move right along, dang on. Nova visits Aunt Bai. You know, we love Miss Aunt Bai. And, um, pretty much, um, 
Vi and Hollywood, they just get back from a damn trip from out of the country or somewhere. They was on a vacation or something somewhere. So Vi's looking real refreshed, you know. And uh, she, she's very, you know, light and airy. And uh, pretty much no one tells her about the book offering and all that. And so Vi, she's elated. She's like, okay, are you going to take it? Like, go ahead, do the daggone thing, girl. So uh, somewhere or another, uh, Charlie comes onto the scene. And so Nova breaks the news to Charlie and everything. They kind of sitting there talking in the dining room. Room and uh, comes up behind him. Who is that? Micah. He actually has this new camera and all that, and he's kind of like capturing like sentimental moments and things. It's an actual camera that he got for Christmas and everything. So, um, the next thing, the family is all kind of chilling together. Um, you know, Hollywood's kind of, you know, he's in the picture right now, and um, of course, he just got the settlement. Well, at this point, Charlie is kind of schooling him on financial advice about, you know, investing and things and what you need to do with uh, your money and how you can make it grow for you and work for you and all that. And, and Hollywood kind of like not even trying to hear that. He's so focused on the damn wedding and everything. But I'm like, dude, you need to be listening to motherfucking Charlie ass. Don't ever shun away a damn way to make a fucking coin or to flip your damn coin or whatever. That's what's wrong with a lot of us black people. We don't know about investment and stuff and we scared to learn about that shit or whatever. But I think that, if, you know, some of us just took the time to learn about different things or whatever, we could definitely be in a better financial situation because, you know, you always should be damn willing to damn learn and grow and then especially be willing to grow your fucking money, okay? Anywho, so, um, let's, uh, move along or whatever. They was talking about the wedding, so blah, blah, blah. They getting ready to get married Hollywood and buy. So, uh, Ralph Angel, he's kind of sitting by himself in deep thought because, of course, you know what I'm saying, he done had to break up with his girl. He don't even know if the damn son uh, uh, that he been taking care of since birth is his or whatever. So, he just kind of in deep thought. Then he's like, okay, what's going on with the whole Queen Sugar and all the sugar cane and all that? So, at this point in time, Charlie kind of comes in the room. It's kind of like, is you, is you all right? Are you good? You know what I'm saying? So... You know, he asked uh, Charlie about the whole deal with the Landry's and stuff. And Charlie pretty much like, you know, yeah, I did it. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to gut punch the fuck out of them. We're going to take over this whole thing from the inside out and everything. I'm going to get all into their files, their books, their records. I'm going to find out who all their connects and everything is and all that shit. And we're going to definitely take this whole thing over and get our people back, our land back. And we're going to just dang on wipe them the fuck out. And I do believe that damn Charlie has that damn capability because she's just one of them type of boss ass shits like that or whatever because she's damn calculated with the shit that she do. So I'm pretty sure she got this whole shit figured out in her head. But it's always a hiccup or some shit in the road. I'm pretty sure some damn uh, shit is going to happen because these Landry's and the Boudreaux's and all them, they don't fucking play and they damn will damn do anything they got to do to make sure they get what the hell they want and to put the dang on um, border lawns and some shit or whatever and they really looking to take over that little piece of damn uh, land that Mr. Ernest had been trying to save for the kids for all them damn years, okay? So, boom, let's move right along. They pretty much are at the dang on St. Joe's Classic Basketball Game. And um, everybody's kind of there. It's like a community event and all that. That's where they meet Prosper. Now, I don't remember Prosper having a cane in the last season. But this time, he has a cane. But, you know, he's kind of meeting and greeting the family and stuff. So, they all kind of there. Um, Blue is still kind of doing his little wandering off rebellious shit or whatever. And I'm like, Ralph Angel, why haven't you popped his ass or whatever, because he needs his ass whooped, you know. And I ain't no little popping ever hurt no damn kid. That's what's wrong with the kids these days. They out of line, and they need to get the ass whooped every day of the damn kid, okay. Not no abuse, but you need a good ass popping every damn now and then, okay. So, anywho, um, Charlie sees a man and um, his grandchild or whatever, and... Um, Pretty much with that situation, you know, Charlie's kind of looking at them like weird and everything. And they kind of share words and exchange words. And it was like a short dialogue. But she's still kind of puzzled about this guy. And so I guess we're going to find out about him a little bit later. And uh, at this point in time, Michael's up in the stand taking pics of everything. You know, Charlie asks about Kiki and where she is and why she's not cheering at this game. And Michael reveals that she has the flu. And, um... <laughs> 
pretty much Charlie and uh, Remy, they both at the game because Remy's kind of on the other side or whatever. And they kind of make this nice little eye contact or whatever. And um, nothing really came above it, uh, came about it. But like I said, they, they acknowledge each other was there. So you know how it is when you got got an ex or something in the room. You always kind of find your, find your way to eyeballing them or seeing them in some type of way. Me, I be running from their motherfucking ass and I be trying to get the fuck out. But anywho, that's just me. Uh, so, uh, it comes time to play the on National Anthem. Of course, this is the on pageant uh, winner of the um, area pageant. Uh, the one they did that, that they pretty much picked all the white girls and they don't really pick the black girls. So, that's why Charlie did her pageant for Queen Sugar last season to um, acknowledge those uh, minority women. And so, um... She's the one who's singing the actual national anthem and stuff. And um, during this time of point, um, about four or five students uh, get up, um, black students. They walk out in the middle of the court and they get right in front of her. And they start kneeling in protest and solidarity for the whole Colin Kaepernick movement. Now this right here was a, a keystone moment in the dang on whole uh, episode because... This is where the dang on crowd really show they ass. You show the division in the community and stuff. And that's when the Confederate flag started coming out. Stuff started being slung onto the court. Racial slurs and everything started being thrown at them. And at this point right there, Nova feels empowered because she's for the people. And so she dang on gets her strong ass black power fist or whatever for the whole movement and everything. And she, she ready to dang on stand with them in case some shit pop the fuck off. Because at any given moment in that scene, something could have popped the hell off. That couldn't have been uh, good. But security escorted the people off of the court and everything. And um, the game goes on. Pretty much St. Joe's wins. Blows out the other damn team or whatever. And um, at this point in time, it's time to go. And Hollywood's trying to help buy off of the dang on bleachers. And uh, Vi's pretty much kind of shrugging him off like, you know, I don't need you right now, you know, leave me alone. And so Hollywood feels offended because he really cares and loves for Vi. He knows her situation. He just really wants to be there for her, you know, uh, especially since he done cleared up that whole situation with his ex-wife and stuff. So, um, you know, Blue and, um... Ralph Angel, they over at the truck and everything, and um, Blue still cutting up, needing his ass whooped or whatever. Uh, and the girl named Tamika, she kind of comes over to the truck and she's kind of like, "What's up, Ralph? You know, what I'm saying I heard the word on the street is you and Darla not together no more. So you know, what's really good? So at this point in time, she trying to give up some ass to him or whatever, and. We gonna see if Ralph Angel takes the fucking bait. Let's move right along. So they all go to the bar and stuff after the game, and um, no, but she's still looking at the film that was recorded from the whole protest of the kids and stuff. And um, like I say, she's just uh, intrigued by it because it just kind of inspired her and everything that these young children would be taking such a big stand like that. Well, over on the side, you got some coon ass motherfuckers talking about, you know what I'm saying, the kids and how they was interrupting the game and how they shouldn't have did that and everything. And I'm like, damn, why the fuck they can't dang on do that? They expressing their First Amendment right. They maybe could have dang on done it on the side or whatever because, you know, they did it right in front of her. That was a bit much. But, you know what I'm saying, I get it, you know what I'm saying, how you take your motherfucking stand is how you take your stand. Um, but, you know, Nova quickly pulls their ass together and lets them know, like, them kids had a right to do what the fuck they needed to do. And if this, that's what they felt at that moment, that's what they felt. So, boom, um... At this point in time, Bai kind of notices Remy all the way across the way, you know, because they all kind of hang out in the same spot. So, Bai uh, invites Remy over, and so Charlie kind of takes the time to go over there and, you know, and make the formal invite. And, um, you know, he pretty much declines. And it's like, you know what I'm saying, not at this moment, you know, because he's still kind of disgusting with Charlie that she would make a deal with the damn devil, um, which is the dang on Landry's and stuff. So... 
pretty much at this point in time, dang on, uh, Charlie is uh, going to go get her another drink because she's kind of disappointed at the whole interaction because she feels like they can still be friends. But, you know, you have to understand his position too. Like, he helped you build this shit all the way up, Charlie. So, you know, he has a lot of at stake in this. And then you really went on ahead and did this. Even though you got a master plan, you did this behind his back and he thought that y'all was on one accord and all that. And he pretty much let you know the last season that, you know, he thought he knew you, but he really don't. I mean, and you really don't really know somebody till you done been with them at least two years, I feel. Shit, you know, because you still learn the stuff daily. So he found out that, you know what I'm saying, this this chick is calculated and she ain't going to stop at nothing till she get what the fuck she want. Mm. So, like I said, I mean, it ain't a bad thing, but like I say. You could at least consult it with the guy, but hell, it is your money, it is your family farm and all that, so you can have to consult with no motherfucking body, but you in a relationship with this guy, but y'all ain't married either. Let's put that in perspective. Um, so pretty much, you know, uh, Jacob Landry's right there, he's flirting because he already want a piece of the black meat. I ain't gonna even sit here in front. He wants some of Charlie, the way he be looking at her and gazing at her and stuff, and, um, pretty much he's, um, Kind of just pushing up on her. And Charlie's not feeling it. But at the same time, she got dang gone Remy in the back or whatever. She keeps eyeballing and stuff. And he looking at her like, chick, what the fuck is you going to do with this guy or whatever? Why you ain't damn brushing him off or whatever? And um, he just kind of in the loop and don't really, um, out the loop and don't know what to think about their whole relationship. Because he probably thinks they cheating or something like that or whatever. But that really ain't the case. She's trying to dang going to get her ducks in the row so she can take over their whole damn empire. That's what this whole situation is about Remy so get into it um so anywho move right along um Ralph is at home he's in the office or whatever Blue is up in the background and then at this point in time Darla FaceTimes and um she wants to kind of speak to Blue or you know at least Ralph Angel won't try to speak to her he just hit the phone straight to Blue I won't quite sure what happened right there and um Blue pretty much asked Darla, like, you know, mommy, when you coming back home, and, you know, Ralph overhears this conversation, and he's kind of tore all the way up in the inside because he don't know what to think about Blue uh, and Darla and why Darla, um, why he loved her so much and why she would damn lie and why she wouldn't just come clean earlier than, you know, seven, eight years damn later. That was kind of crazy as hell, but at least she did tell you or whatever, you know. So, anywho, let's move right along. Uh, Hollywood and Vi, they at the house, and pretty much Hollywood confronts Vi and was like, you know what I'm saying, what's up, you know, I'm trying to help you out, you know, I'm going to be there for you, but you're not letting me be there for you, and, uh, you know, I feel some type of way about you snatching your hand away at the game when I was just trying to assist you from getting down the bleachers, and Vi was like, you know, I don't need to be put on no pedestal or whatever, I don't need nobody catering to me, and, uh, Hollywood's like... You know, girl, you deserve to be catered to. I'm going to cater to you, and I'm going to cater to you. So, I'm like, that was pretty sweet right there. Go ahead, Hollywood. Everybody, every woman needs them a Hollywood in their daggone life. And, hell, if you a gay man, you need you a damn Hollywood. Shit, ain't nothing like it, okay? So, boom. Um, so, we moving right along. Charlie's at the house uh, watching videos of police beatings and stuff that she got in her email and she actually realizes who that man was at the dang on um game it was the actual police that was committing committed some police brutality and uh at this point in time of course um She's all um, nervous because I think I left this out. Micah decided that he wanted to stay a little bit after and hang out with some friends after the game. Um, and so Micah missed his 12 uh, a.m. curfew. And um, Charlie's all in a frenzy and stuff. And pretty much Micah just pops up and was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. As she was in the middle of calling and... Like, Mom, it's going to be all good. I'm here. You know, some stuff happened. She's like, you know, you need to plan your dang on trip uh, home better because I don't need no more shit happening to you because Micah has actually been through a lot or whatever. And I don't know about y'all. He always looked traumatized to me in the damn thing. Like, he just scared and timid as fuck or whatever. So, like I said, she, she's kind of all the way... Um, Nervous about the situation, about his well-being, especially with all the stuff that's been going on. So, boom, moving right along. Um, Nova, she's actually sitting down and talking with those students that actually did the protests at the game and stuff. And she's actually kind of intrigued by them because she wants to know their angle and what their thoughts are and everything. And, um, you know, um, 
that's kind of you know she kind of sees a, a young her and all those kids so pretty much like i said it was just a nice little moment for her to get tapped into their brain so we're gonna see where these kids go and how she interacts with them throughout the rest of the day on season so boom we moving right along we got ralph angel we got charlie and we got nova they all sitting at the dang on um dna clinic and they're waiting on the results uh blue and um they're all kind of nervous and stuff. Well, the lady comes in with the envelope and everything, and she kind of tells, you know, Ralph, like, you know what I'm saying, if you need a minute, here goes the notes. And so Charlie and um, Nova, they get up, and they kind of step aside and let him have that little moment to reveal the stuff to himself. And, um, you know, only thing that, you know, Ralph Angel could say after he opened the stuff was, you know what I'm saying, it still don't change anything. He's like, it still don't change anything. It still don't change anything. So, I'm assuming that Blue is not his. Um, that's pretty much what Nova and Charlie them, you know, they came over to console him at the end. But he's pretty much hurt about the situation. And he has really no other choice but to be hurt because it's some fuck shit that, you know, he been raising this kid as, as his own all this time. And it's really not his or whatever. So, um... Let's see. Boom. Let's move right along. Charlie uh, at her pop's house. She pretty much is talking to Prosper and stuff up under the tree. And Prosper reveals that he's having to have back surgery. And he's not going to be able to do the dang on crop this upcoming season. And now uh, he's kind of concerned about is Ralph Angel going to be able to handle all the stuff on his on all the um, acreage. Uh, I think it's 800 acres of, uh, of crop and everything on his own. So, uh... Like I said, that's kind of what he pretty much uh, reveals to her. And uh, Charlie promises that she's going to take care of the community and everything. And like I said, that's pretty much how the whole dang on uh, episode ends. Oh, let's not forget dang on Ralph Angels at the house. And so Tamika, the girl that was at the game, she comes over and... Um, she ready to give us some ass or whatever. So as she about to go in the house, Ralph Angel like, uh-uh, girl, come on around back right here. You ain't going up in there. So I guess he about to go beat that dang on thing down around the back in the shed or something like that right there. So, like I say, I'm ready to see what tonight's episode is going to bring about Queen Sugar. I'm ready to get all the way into this season. Thank y'all for tuning in with me and just checking me out. This has been Mike Cardi of Mike Card TV. Please hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that share button. I will be back at you all soon, soon, soon. All right, love you all. Love you all. Bye. <laughs>